Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're looking at making a hand-painted blunderbuss or thunder gun game object. It will be a low poly model and only one texture so great for games but also really great fun to create. In this short episode I'll be talking about whether we need to join our shapes together or whether we can have them overlapping for performance in games and I'll briefly get our model ready for the unwrapping process. I've done this so that beginners out there don't need to follow the next video if they don't want to, because it can get a little bit more awkward in terms of retopology. If you like what I do and want to make a full game ready character, then take a look at my character course and take a look in the description for my other courses, other playlists on this channel for lots of educational content. The reference image for this model and the model itself, unpainted that is, is available. Again, follow the links in the description. Okay, so here's where we got to last time. And there's a little bit of debate about this next section. You can actually just unwrap this model all together, start painting on it, and then when you finish, join them all together. You'll have some overlapping shapes, but that's actually okay. And apparently it has minimal performance influence on your games. So for most people starting out, I would suggest doing that. What it does mean is that you'll have extra vertices there that you don't need and some shapes will overlap each other. It's not optimal, but it's okay. And now there's lots of people who will say, oh, but you've got overlapping shapes, that's disgraceful. You should be shot with a big blunderbuss. But actually it's okay to have overlapping shapes. It makes your job much quicker if you don't have to join them and you can just have a few overlapping shapes like this. However, if you want optimum performance, it is better to join all the shapes together as far as you can. You'll have less vertices and therefore it will be more optimal and you'll have no overlapping shapes which means you'll be utilizing all your UV space when you're painting. But more about that in later episodes. So let's take a quick look at our blunderbuss. First of all, I've forgotten to put the brackets in here and here. So I'll just really quickly do that. Right click, Shift A to add, and I'll use a cylinder, but a small cylinder. So six sides should be fine. Scale that down and put it in there. Let's go to front view and just have a look at the size there and check that looks all right. How much detail you go to here is entirely up to you. You might want another bracket on here. So for example, if I go to edit mode, face mode, select the bottom face. So I'll go to x-ray mode for that. Select that bottom face. Round to front view, G to grab in the Z axis. E to extrude, scale, E to extrude and pull it down. And then you've got a sort of bolt on your bracket. I'll press shift D to duplicate that and G to grab in the X axis and pull that across to there. And at the moment it's sort of indenting our thingy-jiggy at the front there. Let's go back to solid view and see how that's going to affect things. Is it going to look bad? Possibly not, but we can edit this shape a little bit to accommodate it. But I'll do that as I start editing things. So a little bit of overlap like that isn't going to make much difference. What you will want to do if you have shapes that overlap, such as this one here, you'll want to go into isolation mode and with forward slash on a numpad into edit mode and get rid of faces at the top there. So select that face, press delete and choose faces and at the bottom there. So delete and then faces. The same with something like the trigger here into isolation mode. We don't need the top face so we can delete that. These things sticking out here, we can go in and delete that inside face that won't be seen there. And the bolts we just made top and bottom faces, we can delete those. Okay, so that's actually fine for working with games. If this was animated in any way, maybe you had some sort of lattice modifier that made it bend and twist or something strange like that, then maybe you'd see some issues with overlapping shapes like this, but probably not. And even if you are tidying up the shape a lot, so joining this shape to this shape and to the back here, there are some objects I would always overlap, such as these ones at the edge here, there's no point in trying to integrate them into the gun. You'll end up creating lots of extra topology, lots of extra edge loops to try and integrate them, which is kind of pointless and defeats the object. So have them overlap, that's fine. Now you might decide you're going to join your shape together or leave it as separate objects which are overlapping. Either way, it's a good idea to mirror all these shapes here, but not these three because they won't be seen on the other side. We want to mirror all these shapes because we want to be able to unwrap and have the same unwrap happen on the other side as to this side. Also, if you're going to cut your object up and join it together, you'll certainly want to mirror it as well. But for these objects, they are going to stay separate. Okay, in order to join these together, this one here has a mirror modifier and this one here doesn't. So if I were to join these together by selecting both and pressing Ctrl J, you can see that this one suddenly cuts in half 
because it loses its mirror modifier and it becomes joined to this object which was the active object. I'll undo that and you can see that it's joined to this object because it was yellow so it's the one I selected last is the active object and it copies all its attributes from that one. So what I'm going to have to do with this object and any others that have a mirror modifier I'm going to have to apply them. So I think it's only these two objects that have a mirror modifier so I just need to come across and press apply and if you want to do it at the same time you can press ctrl a with them all selected visual geometry to mesh and that will apply them both at the same time but most people don't remember that and you can just apply over here in the modifiers okay so I've got all these meshes now and I don't believe any of them have any modifiers so I should be able to join them together without any problem remember we're not joining these three so select them all and the last one you have selected is where the center point of the new object is going to go that's an okay position so we can press ctrl J and they're all joined together now just a note on that if I undo that if you haven't got an object highlighted yellow for some reason the join command won't work so just make sure you have an active object and whatever you select last is the active object so it can be this one if you like control J and they're all joined together now as I said earlier we will want to mirror this because we want to copy our UVs from one side to the other and it is symmetrical so we can use the auto mirror tool it is in the Y axis across there it is negative so we have this bit at the front and we press auto mirror and you can see we've got that whole big shape there mirrored and it'll be much easier for us to make any edits okay so in the next episode I will be joining these shapes together and talking about basic retopology of these sort of items I thought I'd separate this into two videos then if you're a beginner you can skip the next one okay so hopefully you're still enjoying this thanks for all your support thanks for those that donate watch an advert or signed up to my patreon comment below with any questions or thoughts thanks for watching and I'll see you next time